Spirit near towards the Lord, but here comes RQ. They've already got the Lord taken out, and they are going straight to finish up game number one. But there's going to be a defense coming in from the side of Baron Esports. They tried to hold on. Rainbow with the blood. Oh, he flickers away, but look at R7. He's chasing right in as well, but he will give his life for it. Brent Esports, they're slowly going down, and game one is in the hands of Esports can lose from. Yeah, speaking of losing stuff, they already lost the e top side of the turret, and you can definitely see that Finn is absolutely oh. caught out. That's not where you need to be at, but the Lord is already scored it, and Lusty is hunting for those kills. Brad Esports will definitely get this equalizer right here. For in here, it's not going to be good for you. Now there's the Dark Knight falls from the back. Finn once more, the first casualty, and Lord still stands. That's going to be the Poissant here, pop by Flap Easy from the back. Finn gets destroyed by the OG Shadow Kill. And replay done. The Doctor takes out Psycho as R7. well. And R7 right in the middle of four members of Ready Sports. Make that five. That's all of them, ladies and gentlemen. They're going to go for the push. It's just Wiz King left to defend. Is it enough? The answer is no. Another Shadow Kill by the good Doctor. Ladies and gentlemen, Brandy Sports with the classic. Recall in front of your base as they take game number The Lord over the midside, but Brad going for the dive! Oh, it's going really hard. They already get been in the process. R7 and now pulling on back. He wants to go back into uh, the base to get some help. But Sin, he's locked down in the Imperial Justice. But can they peel him up? Finally, Whiskey is in position to do so. They lose two inhibitor turrets at the same time here. But Brent, they're going for the end. This is it. Brent trying to pull on forward. RQ clearing the waves as much as they can. But they're throwing their bodies Lusty. as soon as they do. Lusty, he's done it. He's brought more glory. Welcome to the Grand Final. Finals, Bren Esports! Probably because of the hero pool of the certain uh, of the certain players that just came out for them. I think for RRQ, Sin could Sin and Wiz King could be more aggressive and more stable in the early game for their side. Now, what do you think about this, Leo? I mean, early game here of the Benedetta coming in from Ren's side and the Yishin Shin as well from RQ Hoshi. Is this going to skew themselves to, again, these big playmakers like Selena that just got banned? Yeah, I think I'll agree because the draft itself, the first bans, will also support that <clears throat> that theory, that hypothesis, if you will, is because a lot of Bren's wins, they snowball. A lot of Bren's wins, they just start strong, hit the ground running, and that's essentially what these two draft bands, Yusun Shin and Selena, will say. And for Bren Esports, what they can do here is just respect what the current meta dictates, and then roll with the punches, given that they are on the red side, Brody taken out. Just to recall some of the matches that RQ Hoshi has gone through, remember that there was the longest game as well as the shortest game uh, being achieved by the team itself. They definitely have interesting dynamics, but like what was being uh, pulled up, we're talking about that early game a scuffle for that first turtle. This is some department that, of course, RQ Hoshi is already intending to work on, especially when their goal is to actually set up for the late game. So. Definitely, Red Esports can look to punish them with those sort of picks, but we've already got all these bans coming in. What are your thoughts, Gideon? Mm, I'm thinking... Mat okay, so here's what's on the table. Matilda's on the table, Jawhead's on the table, both really strong first picks for either side. And since Benedetta isn't there, I would lean towards one of the two. But we've seen this change up quite a number of times, right, Butters? Yeah, RQ Hoshi, they're just one team that I'm actually surprised that they banned out the Selena first because usually for the other teams, they just go for these certain templated bans for the tournament meta. Mathilda will be their first pick, while for the side of Brent Esports, they just go straight for the Yuzhong. Oh, and... Yeah. And, and, and I like this because they're giving priority to Lusty. Just because you are giving priority to Lusty, he isn't forced to pick something weird or something that is not going to be the best or something that is heavily countered on the side of Araki Hoshi. What well, else this draft says is that Brenny Sports are still reading what Araki Hoshi is doing, right? By picking up the Yuzhou on Flaptizi, you're playing a safe hero and then also by picking the Sylvan already, you're still opening up the fact that this might be for few, this might also be for Lusty. Lapu-Lapu and Claude picked up by RQ Hoshi. 
nothing too crazy just yet. James is still sticking to what the metagame dictates is right. Yeah, I definitely agree with this sort of pick coming in towards phase one here, which is relatively safe for RRQ Hoshi, but diving in towards phase two, of course, they've already got their hands on Lancelot for the side of Brand Esports, which is what we have seen what they could do back in towards that match against Elder Eagle. I actually think that Bren Esports is not even trying to read into what RRQ Hoshi wants to do. It's just that they are successful in these heroes. Like Wolf said earlier, they don't have a huge hero pool of heroes that they win with. I mean, these are just heroes that they want to play and they're comfortable with this. RRQ Hoshi. No matter what they bring out, this is going to be the setup for our, for Bren Esports that's going to work. That's dangerous. That's dangerous. Well, it is. And knowing the knowing Bren Esports, we just have to accept the fact that they need to be a little bit more creative in terms of this. But for this Lancelot, this Yuzhong, this Silvana, they're safe with this. Yeah, and now coming into the second phase, they're going to get rid of the Loyi as well as the Harith here. Both very important wave clearers, and more importantly, especially for RQ's Hoshi's side, yes, they do have Matilda for that magic damage, but they're not going to have too much lane priority, which I think even Bren realizes, all right, we don't want our side lanes to get punished because we have seen, you know, things like Harith show up into the side lane, things like Lunox and Farsa mm -hmm. show up into the side lane as well. I definitely think the uh, both heroes that you mentioned is going to be pretty much contributing to a very big factor, but they got to find a way to answer this Lancelot, which nobody has been able to stop Kaltizi at it, and where's all the lockdowns that we need? Like, the Circling Eagle is definitely not going to be enough, and with that, we definitely see the Cho being axed off, just to make sure that nobody catches him with the way of the Dragon. Mm. I like the Cho pick just because it it's the only available. It's one of the options here for RQ Hoshi to just lock down that uh, lance. I actually agree with Contra. Just looking at how the three first three picks here for the side of RQ Hoshi is set, they do not have an answer for the Lancelot as of now. Joy is not enough. Joy is telegraphed. Like, I mean, you it's, see, it's, it's a choice that's left. There's, yeah, there's no it, hero for Psycho. There is, but. Having that certain unstoppable force ejector, you can see it coming from a mile away. Well, you have the combo, you have the circling eagle, and yeah, Brenny Sports, they're not even shy about it. This is definitely gonna be Doc Ribos, Alice from the gold lane. I wonder what Wiz King is thinking because this quad, this quad can still be a sneaky gold laner. Mm. Yeah, it still can. It's pretty flexible in that sense. And I think, you know, even Bren uh, now picking up the Alice as well as the Yuzong, they realize no matter what we pick at this point, even if we do get the 1-1, one, one, it, it's a little too late. And if we want to dominate the lane, it might not necessarily work out anyway. So you might as well get a relatively safe, uh, relatively safe laner. And if RQ decide to go for a double marksman composition, that's even better for us with our Assassin on top of the fact that we have some great pick potential and some really powerful scaling for that late game. Sin and Vin. They're like brothers, and they rhyme. Their names rhyme. Same goes to Call as it's well as Flapti. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right? So... It's, it's, it's a connection. It's a combination. <laughs> yeah. All and right. Interesting enough, they bring in the Kai again. This is something that was being introduced back in their best of five against Burmese goals. But oh. here comes Lunox, which wasn't banned away. So there's a lot of damage output coming in from both you know, the 80s side of things as well as oh. Magic. Wow, I'm liking what I'm seeing from Brand Esports. It's gonna be tough for Psycho to lock people down, but when he does, boy is it sweet. Mm -hmm. I, I suppose, I, I, I definitely suppose here, but I think RQ, they've got a much stronger early game in comparison to Brand. So as long as Brand, they basically want to play the early game a little bit more passive, just focus on clearing the ways and focus on, you know, if they have to give up certain things on the invade, they just have kind of have to here. They don't have a choice. And Matilda is really going to be a problem for that. But at level four, Brand's going to have a huge swing into their favor because they're very ultimate dependent. Yeah, I like Bren Esports draft as well, but you really have to give props to that Akai uh, pick from the side of Arki Hoshi. You might not have the catch, that solo single target catch, but you can 
you can destroy or you can cancel his combination. And that is the thing for the Lancelot. Just don't let him burst out deep. Well, I think it is time to get into the game. This is game one. Let's roll into the land of dawn for our semi-finals matchup at M2. Boys, take it away. Well, of course, All Eyes is going to be on Sin as he will be the one that will be taking over out oh. But just look at Few already getting his health taken down low. Not even going to be polite about it just yet. You come into our range, we will knock you down a peg. Few already less than half health, not even a minute into the game. Looking at the lanes, it's R7 on the Lapu Lapu facing off against Rebo in the gold lane up top. It's Flap TZ versus Wiz King. So there's a little switcheroo being showed here by our Kyohoshi. Again, you're never really sure what James is thinking. Mm -hmm. Now, under the middle lane, this is a normal uh, matchup. Few will, uh, few knows that he will get harassed a lot here as long as he doesn't have his level 4. And as you can see, the damage output in the Matilda is just way too high. But it's okay because Few is the one getting damage, not Carl TZ. Yeah, of course, the, if we do see how easy though, trying to actually go for the little wander here, and Imole backs away, understanding that Sin as well as Vin, they could actually pull off some significant damages now that he does have the double belt buff as well. So, a little bit of push and shove coming from both ends. Brent Esports, they cannot force any issue. Yep, as Gideon said, Brent is just waiting for the level four, and that's when they go ahead and put it into high gear. That's when things get to start and that's when it becomes more interesting right now turtle is coming up about 10 seconds from now in the top lane this is whiz king and vin waiting to find someone catching them off guard and now carthese just clearing the wave alongside the rest of these mid laners preparing for the first turtle take and yeah, speaking of which we can definitely see that rq is in the prime position to be able to get that challenge in and for lusty he's keeping an eye out and here comes psycho Mm. Lusty is using the brush as well, but RQ, they are going for the Lord next. And this is going to be tricky for them because oh. the Lancelot is on the other side. Nice catch on the few first blood drawn by Shin. And there's no counter go. That's going to be the Rampage Sandstorm. Lusty bites it. Flap TZ. He's a little too low. Oh, not even a trade. They do get one. It's Vin, but it's three on the side of RQ Hoshi. Seven. 7.3 to 6.7. Oh, already that, a 500 gold lead. That was the perfect timing for RQ Hoshi to pick a fight. Why? Because Carl Teezy's orange buff expired. He doesn't have the extra damage to help their side. And now, Bren Esports have to bow out from that certain fight. Yeah, and you got to give it to Sin on his perfect position as well. He managed to get two kills out of that effort. And those pickoffs out there has been able to just deny a little bit more time before the rest of the man's esports side, of course, comes in with some big plays later on. But Phantom Execution and stuff like that being brought up, the Wander secure, but all eyes are still on Turtle once again. But something's happening down here. Yeah, no, I think uh, Rebo understands that he can rotate much faster than R7. So that means he doesn't have to miss a wave and then he can be part of the team fight. Now Turtle take going on here. Lusty looking for a target. He does have his Imperial Justice on cooldown. That's going to be called easy take in the first Turtle. Down goes Lusty. Vin gets him down. Oh, that's going to be another takedown. Few gets eliminated. Two for none. Is it worth the Turtle? What a pincer attack coming in from both sides. Arky Hoshi, they just rushed right in and got Brent Esports members all caught out. And I definitely like what they are doing with the Kai, just having the Hurricane Dance in perfect position. Mm. Now, team fight for Brent here is going to be really tough, but as long as they do not give as much turrets as possible, it's going to be great. Psycho will be the first target and he will go down with King here. He's getting chased down, but Sin is there to help his ally, and that's going to be flat. But Brent, they're going for this. It seems like Fuel will be bursted down, but it will be the Order of Burns being popped right in. Wiz King does get that double for that time. Great exchange coming from RRQ. Called TZ tries to take the buff away, and Finn. He tries to move right in first position, catching on towards Losty, but Call TZ, how far can he run with a mega kill coming from Wiz King? Mm. 
That was a very risky play coming out from Bren Esports. Carl just wanted to take that purple buff from Sin. But RQ Hoshi was on top of it. Yeah, and definitely a great timing on that circling eagle itself. Now 8-3, to three, but the goal difference is not going to be too huge in the early phase of the game. Three more seconds till the next objective. Well, I definitely see that right now. Members inside of Brent Esports, they're trying to pull the trigger on a very difficult uh, position and that definitely didn't pay any dividend at all. Now, looking at it, this is the team that, this is the roster or lineup here for RQ Hoshi that really has a much aggressive early game. They go for those turtles. When Bren Esports, they're kind of caught off guard here. Yep, here we go. Blazing Duet by Sin. He gets out of there. Battle Mirror Image. Did he steal it? I think he did. Carl Teasy is without his purple. And now the second turtle comes up. I think the fact that RQ Hoshi is just more comfortable with just giving up the turtle to get beneficial trades is dangerous for Bren Esports. Mm. Yeah, uh, right now the turtle is going to be the main target for both of these teams. Bren Esports really want that. RQ does not want to give that Psycho. to them. Psycho with the Petrify. Oh my goodness. Lusty just goes down. Not a good look for Lusty so far. And without that Imperial Justice, whether it be because it's on cooldown or whether it's because they catch him like that, not even blinking. Oh no, Flap DZ gets a barrage of bullets from Shin. And that's going to be Vin putting the nail in the coffin for Flap TZ. It's looking tough for Brennan Sports. Yeah. Six minutes, 45 seconds in. Doc Ribo tries to go for a push. That's going to be R7 not able to save the turret. In comes Psycho. And of course, Blood Oat already being popped up as they will be able to match this pretty much safely. I don't really like the sort of exchange that they had back in towards the Turtle Pit. And this is where things get a little bit rowdy with the rest of RQ. Hoshi moving right back in, chasing on towards Ripple as he tries to make an escape. Oh. But how long can he last? As you can see, R7 has already got members right behind him. And Sid might just actually get this one coming. Now, Reba is just trying to scale at the bottom lane, but the problem is RQ Hoshi just control the top lane, and now the next target for them is going to be this bottom lane. They want to get this before the 60 second, uh, before 60 seconds passes, so that they can set up to the top lane and get the next objective there. A turtle probably, but RQ Hoshi has their sights set on just controlling every single side of oh. this map. Lusty tries to put a bead on to R7, misses it. Phantom Execution still online. They're gonna use, gonna use it for a dash. It's not enough. Sin finds you and Flap Teasy uses Black Dragon form to retreat. Lusty survives, but only for now, as well as Flap Teasy. That's minus one. Carl finally shut down here. No longer a thorn on the side of RRQ Hoshi. They push mid. That's gonna be open. And Butters, as you were saying, it's a diversion play. And they just got a free turret along the way to drive through, right? They're yep. giving Brenny Sports so many problems so that whenever Arky Hoshi goes for an objective, there's just no answer because they're trying to, you know, plug these holes in the sinking ship. The playing prowess or the playmaking prowess of Psycho is just showing right here. The amount of pressure, the amount of worry that he puts on Brent Esports' shoulder, it's just too much to bear for them and they break down the pressure to the early game. Yeah, and uh, you could definitely see that RQ's plan when they immediately lock in that clock. This is what they were uh, hoping for in the best case of things. And they've already got five kills on towards this clock. And he's pretty much hard to catch in that sort of moment. Now, a little bit of setup here coming from Psycho as he's looking for a good one. And there we go. This is going to be the choke. They're going for the purple. And look at the life bars melting at the feet of Sin. That's a double. They take one on the backswing. But what is R7 for four members of Brandy Sports? What is R7? It is all worth it. The siege begins right here. They want to penetrate not even 10 minutes in. Yeah, and only a couple of all these members that will be coming up online in the form of Lusty as well as Flap TZ in a couple of seconds here, but they've already lost way too many towers, and I definitely think that RQ Hoshi, they take too much control all in the span of less than even 10 minutes. Let's check out the item, shall we? Butters, 
We've already seen a great build coming out of RQ. Now, if you would look at it, Sin here went for the Brute Force Breastplate. That is going to be good um, defense against the uh, Lancelot. Now, Lancelot isn't at the best position right now just because he has the Heptasis, but no Endless Battle, no Blade of Despair. And Queen's Wings for Flap TZ, he doesn't have the extra firepower. He doesn't have the skill vamp to just back up that tankiness that he has. Although for a few, we're seeing a bit of progression here. Enchanted Talisman to the necklace, Durant's Vin getting a bit of uh, Durant's as well. And at the same time, he does have that casual dreadnought armor just to protect himself from Carl TZ. So far, what I'm seeing is Sin and Vin, say what you will about their names rhyming, but they both understand that they have to somehow go in. This is two heroes that usually don't have to go dive in, but oh, speaking of dives, that's going to be the Order of Brilliance popped in here by Few just to survive. Rebo with the blood flow coming in, and here's a Black Dragon form. Flap TZ, he can smell blood, yeah. but I think Arkyohoshi is setting something up from the left side. Whisking, I think he's looking for it. There's the Rampage, he sends Storm. Oh, they sense the Lark Tank. Can't TZ take it down here? Sin is now godlike. There's the Blazing the Wet. Lusty's going to be next. Whisking puts him in. Down under the ground, six feet, two for none plus the Lord RQ Hoshi is ripe for the finish. They fished him out and with that they initially went in by popping the Order of Brilliance and Lunox already using the ultimate they could not possibly go into cross anywhere near towards the Lord but here comes RQ. They've already got the Lord taken out and they are going straight to finish up game number one but there's gonna be a defense coming in from the side of Baron Esports they tried to hold on Rainbow with the blood oh he flickers away but look at R7 he's chasing right in as well but he will give his life for it Brent Esports they're slowly going down and game one is in the hands of the Indonesian side RRQ Hoshi and uh you saw how aggressive they were in here on you know getting yourself a flex pick and towards the first pick and then later on these two other picks is where things really tell okay this is what i want this is my game plan and rq has just have to respond to that you know what i it's it would be nice if we could have like a win rate on the red side a win rate on blue side like seeing how these players are taking advantage of the first pick or the first two picks of the first phase of pickings will be interesting. But there's the draft. At least we're gonna. At least that would give us a better idea here. But now let's see what direction that Brent wants to go with because we see them kind of bait out like, hey, do you want to let, let go of the Brody? Do you want to let go of the Esmeralda or the Benedetta? They're gonna force our RQ Hoshi to choose. It's gonna be Natalia and Yishin Shin already banned out for Brent Esports. Wow, on the red side, our RQ is gonna be banning out the. Brody as well as the Matilda. I'm guessing Jawhead should show up here, whether by ban or by pick. Uh, I do believe uh, that uh, Lusty is, is decent on it, and Psycho should be able to use the aggression of Wiz King and the Sin uh, to, to, good, to great advantage. And again, for Brenny Sports, I'm wondering why Lusty got locked into uh, the. Um, into the Sylvana earlier, right? That's the benefit of the ban right now by Brenny Sports. I'd like to know, Arky Hoshi from game number one, they really did well to time out the Imperial Justices. Not a single one, not a single one from Brandy Sports earlier was used as they intended. Uh, if you're gonna pick a Cho, like if you're gonna lock into a Sylvana or a Cho, there's actually a difference between those two. Cho is much more rewarding in terms of punishing those, he those teams that like to split push. But for Sylvana, if you're gonna pick a Sylvana, and the team split pushes, then they don't really fight five as f five on five as much as possible. So you just want to go for the show. But for RQ Hoshi, as you as you've seen on game number one, they really like to go for those fights. So Silvana is going to be much more rewarding. I like the read coming up from Brent Esports that they want to fight, but it, the Silvana didn't just work for them at that point. Yeah, this time we're seeing Claude and Dexter coming into play for Brent Esports. So already snatching this key pick away from Sin. What a way to actually welcome him on the stage. But 
RQ Hoshi, we talked about that Sylvana a lot. Don't you think it's also quite dangerous that they opened this pick up for RQ? I would totally agree here. I mean, the Sylvana is probably going to be the pick coming in from RQ, but the question is whether they do. Do they want to get the Yutong or do they want to get something oh. else? And oh no, instead, they're going to completely avoid it and go straight for something extremely reliable, the Jawhead as well as the Selena. Yeah, the thing about Jawhead is why I'm forcing it and why I'm just not over it yet, why game one didn't show up is it's always on. Ejector is not an ultimate. Ejector comes on and off like within the same team fight two or three times. And yeah, Unstoppable Force, it's an almost confirmed minus one, except for if it's like a tank or someone with um, mobility. But right here, right now, I think if they don't pick up a hero for Lusty, it's gonna be tough. Again, you have to focus so much for your mid lane when you're looking at Brainy Sports here. This can't be a gold laner. There it is. Yep, That's last is. show. Oh, okay. okay. So now with that being shown, I would expect RQ to maybe consider getting an offlaner, but they don't necessarily have to. We have seen teams say like, yes, we do like Lapu Lapu and it is a great pick. However, we can save it for much later on. And not to mention that there's such a plethora of like Wan Wan, uh, the Wan Wan going into the side lane, the Harith going into the side lane, that Yu Zong doesn't necessarily need to win. It's just going to get oppressed and you just have to absorb that damage. I agree. Uh, but RQ Hoshi here, just to put a bit more emphasis into the Selena and Jawhead pick, they will never make Carl TZ, if he's ever going to use the Cloud, they will never give him the idea that he is safe. Mm -hmm. There is always a chance that the Jawhead, as Selena, is just waiting yeah. at a certain area and they're going to throw an arrow, they're going to go for the ejector. And that's the thing, RQ Hoshi, they don't really like this Jawhead pick as much. You don't really see it come out from them. Mm -hmm. But if it's necessary, they will just go for it. And with the Claude on the other side, this is the perfect pick for them into the early game. Honestly, like what you just added right there, let, let's talk about this link pick as well. This gives not much safety net for that Claude where every one of these members can just play ultra aggressive, dive straight to him, just catch him out, whether it's before or after the Blazing Duet is the best scenario to yeah. be able to it's, catch him. It's, of course. A, it's, a, it's a good foil. Yeah, and it's mobility and it's catch. Exactly, and now they're already eliminating all these uh, Difficult to deal with heroes such as the uh, Khalid. R7 well, Khalid. Yeah. So where are they going with this? Oh, no. Here's the thing. Um, from last game, I'm not sure if it was uh, Khalid on the... Uh, sorry, R7 on the Khalid. But uh, RQ Hoshi, I think they understand that they have to lock down few. Again, Lasty has already made it through. So they attack the next best thing. And they attack both few and the gold lane. Although I still have hope that maybe, maybe, just maybe, Brainy Sports can actually flex this and put the Claude in the gold lane. Potentially, yeah. If they need to. I, I think, you know, throwing Claude into the gold lane is definitely a shout here. And, and that's why uh, that's why RQ is just banning out the, uh, banning out the one one saying, at the very least, where you're going to have to flex, flex the Claude. Claude is something that we can see, so that we can uh, deal with, and you can't really change it. The one one could be flexible later on, so don't want to deal with that whatsoever. Thamu's getting banned out by Bren. It looks like they want to push RRQ towards that Lapu Lapu. I think Bren is baiting out the Belleric right now for the side of RRQ Hoshi. Like you have the Claude, you ban out two side laners. Uh huh. It True. feels like you're baiting out something here, but that is going to be the gold lane Harith. Will RQ Hoshi give in? Because the Claude Belleric relationship is actually. You know, very complex. It's a love-hate relationship. I mean, to be fair, Lemon isn't playing, so they might not necessarily whip it True. out, but you don't really know. And, and I do like the Harith pick more so because you can flex him into that gold lane and in towards the mid lane as well, uh, leaving uh, leaving that final pick to kind of predetermine, yeah, we could get the Lapu Lapu, we could still kind of spice things up and, you know, add in a Farsa if we really wanted to, or, oh, yeah. you know, add in oh, a bigger yeah. tank later on. Oh, yeah, two mages can still show up, two mages. Mm -hmm. Side lane, uh, mage, and, uh, of course, mid for a few. Do note, I think uh, it's very possible that a heart can go into the XP lane as well. Yeah. What's scarier than an ultra-fast Zaman Force quick rotation? Like, that's a thing. I don't really see anything oh. or I don't really see any hero on the side of RQ Hoshi that will pin people down in a certain area. Like, I don't I, I don't think they need to. If anything, they're yeah. chasing. They're chasing. 
They're hyper aggressive here. They're playing with the Jawhead and as well as the Selena. Both of those predetermined that if you walk up, we will try, try to take advantage. But I think, you know, Bren, they've got some really good options here. We've seen the matchup time and time again between uh, Selena into the Cho, where, you know, Cho can actually face tank a lot of these Abyssal Arrows with a well timed Shen Po, and then it's not that big of a deal. But coming in with that Silvana, level four is going to be kind of interesting for both sides. I can't really tell who's going to win that, uh, that oh, level four. Okay. okay. Okay, but like this. RRQ, they're going to be locking in the Ruby. Ruby. It gives them certain damage. It controls people. And they just want to hold them into place. And this is perfect for them. There's enough time for them to take people down. I mean, chasing down people, yes, that's true. But you still have to take into consideration the Zaman Force. Harith wants to be there. You know, Ling might be chasing them down. But I think Ling on the other side... It's just gonna go for the back line. I think that's their that's their main idea here. Yeah, we've seen this sort of composition before from the side of Brent Esports. What I'm really surprised is that they honestly didn't bother about the Alice pick or the Silvana, which easily could have been banned away. And they offer 1-1 one, one in Stitch, which kind of secures things for RQ. Like, hey, if game one, it went our way, we're gonna do it again. Yeah, yeah, I see where you're coming from here. And I, I, okay, so uh, give or take, I think RQ was prepared to lose uh, the Sylvana and, or, you know, arguably flex the show. But I think it's time as we get into the game to figure out this conclusion as we move on into game two. Please, Butters, Contra, as well as Leo, uh, you, uh, go for it. Cast this game. Give us some color. Here we go. Brenny Sports versus RQ Hoshi. If Butters was right, if the pacing for Brenny Sports actually is beneficial that they learn a little bit from game number one. We'll see, this should be the uh, litmus test for that. Now, Lusty, leashing a bit for Carl Teasy. This is a quick purple. I think this just allows Carl Teasy to be able to move out a little faster, get that BMI and get that extra little bit of damage and mobility. And then moving on, that's also the purple. Oh, no, orange first, orange first here for Sin. Pretty interesting start as we are already seeing a little bit of contest going over and on towards Little Wanderer. And okay, uh, I, I guess we're going to be staring at them just having a chance of snatching it away. It makes a lot of sense to just go for the or orange first for the Ling. Just because you want to be a bit faster than the Claude. I mean, Claude, dealing damage, dealing the, damage, that is. Uh, not necessarily, but you just want to use your superior mobility to just clear the waves and just find the pickoff. Just get your level 4, go to another lane. The Claude will think, should I go there or should I just farm? Because that's the thing. The Tempest of Blades is a good way to control people as well and take down people in the process. But looking at the side lanes here for the side of print esports i think the ling will have just have a great time going back and forth back and forth on those side lanes as long as in terms of dueling their lanes win mm, i i feel like it was one of those one of those situations where they're kind of uh Pre I wouldn't say preemptively doing it, just playing off the information at hand. You had somebody go into the mid lane, they were going to, you know, fast clear that jungle. They started on towards the orange side because they they can generally see, oh, they started showing up, uh, they started up into the mid lane, they quickly ran over to deal uh, to deal with their purple buff straight away. So at that moment, they say, okay, we can actually match you here. We're going to start on our orange side, move over to our, uh, move over to our purple, and then contest for Litho Wander in the river. I just like how both teams are actually having exactly the same thought, same sort of the routes that they do take. So it's all about, you know, who gets what, and then they can plot the next attack, and we are already back in towards our game. So game number two here, huh? I, I really do wonder how would they shut down Sin side, because they only got Lusty, and if you use his way of the dragon to catch either the Harif or, or even the likes of Finn, it's easier to burst down. But Sin, they gotta make sure that they catch him real fast. That's what Few is for. That's what Few is for. He is on the Sylvana, and I think he'll be a little more frugal when it comes to the Imperial Justice this time around, seeing how it didn't work out so well in game number one. This gold lane matchup up top is also something interesting to note. Harith wins the early game compared to the Alice. Now Few. Spots one off, that's going to be Psycho right across the bush. And while the action isn't happening just yet, oh, nice arrow thrown out. Just misses by a hair. I just love it that 
Bren Esports <laughs> took something from Todak's book and they just put the, uh, Silvana as a support. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like, you can do that. You're not limited into just those high damage dealing heroes. You can scale people there as well. Yep. Now, with this Silvana, they have the extra team fight capability. Yeah, and speaking of which, it's going to be an arrow hitting onwards for you. It's just going to be having his health tickle a little bit. But Ripple, as much as he can, actually move across the map way quicker than the Harith. But he's already down low. It's really hard for him to join in if they were to start the turtle from the side of RQ Hoshi. And we're just waiting for perhaps these guys to be prepared to make that rotation. Yeah, between the two of them up top, Ribo here and R7, obviously... R7 has to telegraph when he's gone. But Rebo, on the other hand, can rotate towards mid and then somehow help out if this turtle fight does break out. As you can see, it's Lusty just waiting here in that pixel bush. That's going to be Zaman Force already committed. So Rebo can say, hey, no more Zaman Force. I think we can move on, try to do something. And after this orange buff, we can expect something big from Carl. Yeah, and it's already going on recall. So he can directly walk straight in towards the turtle pit pretty much quickly. Now, a little bit of the contention for the... Uh, golden crap, if you may call it. So, gonna be a lot of gold coming for the side of Sin. This is great for the side of Bren Esports. If you think about it, Vin hasn't been that hot onto hitting those arrows. Yeah, the not opening so much. wasn't there, and Carl TZ had a good three minutes. The first three minutes were good for Carl TZ. Bren Esports here is going for the turtle, and there's no contest. Up Ooh. top, Rivo will be the target. First blood here by R7. Again, they're trading lives for Turtles. Rebo taken out. That's going to be a huge move for Sin, the first kill of the game. Now, the gold gap isn't so big. This is how we saw it earlier on. And so far, the fact that Rebo stayed in the lane and that's three members of Arkyoshi that had to share uh, the EXP and the gold up top, that's what led to this very, very small marginal gain on Brenny Sports, uh, but there's no conversion, really. Yeah, and Calamity Scythe already in the hands of R7 after one kill in the back, but Psycho easily gets spotted out by a few with that sort of movement. Mm -hmm. Nothing much is going to be happening between the two of them, but of course, Psycho has a very big duty coming in towards oh. those team fights, and he's got to catch out Kaltizi, but look at just the layers of things, and Kaltizi has already used the blazing what? Calamity Reaper is something that R7 can just utilize and uh, if they ever want to pick fights right now, this might be the time that they should go for it. And the upper turret doesn't have any more energy shields, I think. Mm. It was uh, ch uh, chipped down a bit by R7. Yeah, here. all three and of then, them. Yeah. And if ever they want to just go for it, oh! their next objective and Lusty here will be the First target for Vin that he hits. Oh, swift as the coursing river, and well, it definitely did happen in the river, of course. And the rest of the members of RRQ, they're moving right in, trying to set things up against Ripple, but they oh. catch on for the few. Zaman Force being popped out as he tries to run away, and he survives. Mm. Now the rotations coming up from RQ Hoshi, it seems like they're reading into Bren Esports' playbook. They know where the hell is Bren Esports gonna come from. Yeah, it's easy and I think for now RQ Hoshi will do that and try to make this gold gap a little smaller because Carl Tizzi's not there yet. Carl Tizzi's not there. Oh, Flap Tizzi gonna be coming in. There's the ejector on the one. Turtle taken in by the Ling. That's Sin helping out, Lusty destroyed, that's Wiz King taking him in. Psycho though, gonna get away from Flap TZ. So far, it's a one for none, Rebo looking low. He is gonna, oh, oh, the flicker in, the flicker in, all oh, the boy. damage from R7, ladies and gentlemen. They're all low, but they're getting the kills nonetheless. Psycho just acting as a barricade, Carl TZ and Few can't do much. Wow, that was a total win. A, a wash for Brandy Sports. They couldn't get anything. And conversion through the roof. A turret. You want a turret with that? Yes, sir. Yeah, quite a destruction that we've just witnessed over on towards the turtle side. And RQ Hoshi has been able to also back a turret right down below. But I'm looking at the lack of responses coming in from Brent Esports side as well. But we saw an early usage of the Blazing Duet on towards those 
minions itself, I don't think it's relatively worth it. Um, I think Carl Tizi just understands that he has to speed up the clear. Sure. He has to catch up, and they can see that the gold gap is growing. And if he's not joining fights, which I think they shouldn't, then yeah, blazing the web by all means, pull the trigger. Mm. Now, I'm seeing Bren Esports having a hard time. Well, that's obvious. But still, we haven't seen Carl TZ with the Blazing Duet. And it just seems to me that RQ Hoshi are picking their fights well. Mm -hmm. They fight in a time where Carl TZ has his Blazing Duet down. Mm. Yeah, again, it's just it's just basic. It's fundamentals now, nice catch. Imperial oh. Justice on a Psycho. Plus a Diamond Force by R7. A few shields gonna save him there. The Tempest of the Blade. Ensign knocks out Carl TZ. Oh, R7 barely survives. Slap TZ pops him open. That's a double for Sin, though. Rebo gonna get away. Blood Oath keeping him alive, but how long Vin is still alive here. Flap TZ, shot energy. Is it enough for him to take on two? Always oh, King and Vin. Here comes in with the orange buff it's gonna hurt oh i think they disengage they know that few can still deal a lot of damage definitely have to disengage right there it's a two for two trade and it's still working out for side of brand esports as least they do have left easy here Ooh. and they are getting flanked from multiple directions it's a killing spree coming in for Sin, oh. and the next one to fall it's gonna be sin that gets cut out i i think it's pretty okay with this catch yeah well few still the instinct to stay and know that I can out sustain these members of RQ Hoshi left. The spiral strangling keeps El Capitan alive enough to make sure that when Carl Tizi comes back, they can contest for this turtle. And ooh, look at this down bottom. Oh, yeah. Gives them enough space, and Carl gets hit by the arrow. Oh! Oh, damn oh. it, John that's gonna be Carl Tizi shut down. R7 takes the turtle. Zaman Force, there's enough shields in there to keep him alive. RRQ Hoshi shouting their lungs out. They know they won that all in. This is the things that a Selena can do. It can hit your jungler in the middle of two people. And that's how impactful the trick Selena shot. is. If a trick shot. done correctly. Oh, you just look at Whisking and he does not even care how much you can put upon it, but Psycho is getting focused on and oh. they are already trying to get away to cut oh. through the throat and oh. the Yuzong still gets away with that kill after expending that execute. Oh, that was a beautiful execute. Full range, I believe, because Flapped Easy clicked it as he was exiting. Now, if only this was a festival of blood. I think he made the call that was a calculated decision prior to the game. He picks Killing Spree so that he lasts longer in these fights. I'm wondering if he's kicking himself right now saying, oh, I could have gotten stacks. I could have gotten stacks. Uh, maybe he might just be. Oh, but... At that point on, RQ Hoshi could have just let Bren Esports go and try to go for another objective. But what do they do? They try to get as much kills as possible. Then Carl Tease here is gonna have more time to just get his farm. There's no pressure for him. Lusty gets an Athena shield. They are slowly scaling up to that point where RQ Hoshi, they might not have an answer for this god anymore. Oh, oh, here we go. Black Dragon form. Black Easy comes in. There's the appeal. Just catches one. Oh. R7 decimated. And now underneath the turret. This fight is gonna continue. They're gonna trade out Lusty. Taken out by Psycho. It's tank on tank violence. I so call it support all combat. No. All down bottom sin with the split push. Ladies and gentlemen, that's a worthy trade. That was way too sneaky coming from the side of RRQ. Yes, they did trade, and it's okay for R7 right there as they still manage to catch on towards Lusty. Oh, mid lane. no, an ejector into the back. Step is the place, keeping him down. They're still alive. Flap easy. Quite a few hits. Oh, oh, oh! The turn around. Few able to help Cardini survive, but only for so long because Flap easy is going to bite it right here. It's only Few and Rebo. Only Few and Rebo. Lusty going to be trying to come back. Let's get Blood out into the back lines. And Vin is getting the brunt of this all. And right now it's Few. And he's spiral strangling once more. Poking the front lines. And there's a Zaman Force. Oh, you do best to disengage. And our seven gets one. Still, it, oh. these are the fights where you can see the split decision making coming up from these teams. Carl TZ goes back in, takes down Leg. Now, when they saw that, someone just jumped on Carl, 
took him down. The threat assessment here for both teams are so on point. They turn instantaneously if ever a high priority target is, front, is in front of them. Yeah, as much... Uh you just took the words away out of my mouth. They just appear and immediately they pull the trigger right there, just like how Rebel is getting chunked out. Blood O trying to survive, but Rebel will still fall nonetheless. Now, RQ, they should be able to get the top side of the tier ones. And the Lord is already out, but Pew already engaging. And Kaltizi gets caught out. That's going to be the ejector into the Imperial Justice, resulting to not much. Tempest of Blades going to want to start a little bit more trouble in the purple buff. Freddy for this jungle is a hot zone. That's going to be one for few, one for Flapteezy. That's a double, though. Stin shut down by the half dragon. Flapteezy here. He wants more. He smells blood. Two for two. I think that's as good as Brenny Sports can get. Okay. So now that's a 2 for 2 but the advantage here for Bren Esports is they have the Retribution. They can get the Snort, oh. probably try to slow it up a bit, but Psycho and Whisking, they won't let that happen. They're going to force the issue in. Here comes Rebo. Rebo. Psycho going to be going back. Oh, we have the Dragon. Last he says, get away from here. And the Lord is secured by Bren Esports. Just one slight mishap coming from the side of RRQ Hoshi has opened things up. And it all led to this when they saw Sin was already out. Immediately, they called for it, especially, you know, having no retribution on the side of RRQ. And by the time Rebel come, RRQ says, okay, this is definitely not going to be our Lord. And oh boy, this might just be the biggest comeback coming towards game two. Bonus, I have a question for you. Three towers on RRQ Hoshi, but Brenny Sports got the Lord. Who won the trade? Definitely, definitely Bren Esports because they are the ones who's gonna stall the game a bit. Now, this is a Luminous Lord. This is something RQ Hoshi needs to send two to three people for. At least. At least. So that means the turrets oh. on the side of RQ Hoshi are bound to go down and that is one turret immediately at the hands of Bren Esports. Guess what? They're even sending their own man upon it just to try to buy even more time but here's oh, the oh, 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 oh defensive damage of blaze on the sin he is out of this fight for now another push in mid i think that turret down bottom might be next nay make it this one in mid and right now brenny sports they're just taking as much time as they need to to be able to secure the late 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 game carl tz call him mr i don't sleep now, Leo Contra, this is where the jungle choke happens. You can see that Bren Esports is scattering themselves all over the map. Contra, you were saying. Yeah, it's all resources for the South Bren Esports right after securing that lord. Not only that, you see so many layers that we saw coming from the side of RQ. Yeah, they want to go in for those picks every single time that they see Bren Esports. They try to dive right at them. Just look at the goal lead right now, swinging in favor of the side of Bren Esports. All right. 2.5 and well there's gonna be a lot of money for them to buy all these items in i just want to check the items right now so that we have a bit of time oh no there's a fight happening oh no ejector started up it's few that's gonna be tempest of blades you know sin feels it right now black dragon form in here by flap tz oh and whisking gets blown to pieces ejector into the turret summon force right there that's gonna be the barricade down goes whisking rebo gets the kill and that's one for print I think this is the perfect time to just go for an item check. So let's see uh -huh. what like the, never. the Claude has. Demon Hunter Sword. He has the Athena Shield up. Check. He has the Golden Staff check. up. So the, item, uh, the items here are not all uh, damage items, but still it gives him a certain amount of protection. For Flap, it's going to be a Cursed Helmet, a Queen's Mace, and a Bloodlust Axe, plus an Oracle, extra tankiness. Rebo here is almost at item lock, Ooh. so we can expect a lot from him in the coming fights. R7 though, he has a Calamity Reaper, the Feather of Heaven, the Holy Crystal, everything that he and needs oh. to deal a, a certain amount of damage. But Sin with the Queen's Wings, that might help them in the coming fights. Oh, hopefully it does because Psycho is going right in with his unstoppable force already, but he is getting taken down immediately and with oh. that r7 goes in to be securing the killing spree by having you take it out nice nice for rq I, I like that rq is trading out effectively and they defended that inhibitor turret 
relatively well. Could have been cleaner since Psycho had to go down just the same. But there is one thing that's alarming me. One thing that says, oh, RQ Hoshi, I think they uh, know that they're on the ropes is because almost all Tempest of Blades in the past two or three team fights have been defensive. Right now, they want to pick this. Sin, oh, another defensive Tempest of Blades going to be going back. And Flapdeezy and Rebo are here. They're dealing the damage. They're raining it down. That's going to be Ling taking down. Another looking for it. Oh, waiting. Come back. That's R7 now. And from the back, it's Whizking. Three, four, none. Brand Esports can go ahead and take this Free Lord second of the game. And from here, another penetration. You can really see the easy connection. What Sin goes down for Claude. What Flap does is he goes around with the Black Dragon form just targeting Sin. And Sin can't do much about that. Yeah, they went in a little bit too early if you ask me because they went in for that engagement by the corners of the jungle and there's nothing much to get out of it. They lose Sin in the process. This is just history repeating itself. Ooh. And second Lumis Lord for the side of Brent Esports. I think they have got this game pretty much sealed. Yep. Divine Glaive going over to R7. But check it out. Flapdizzy just got his C Halberd now. Middle lane pushed in. Lord isn't even on the map just yet. Now, we have come from just building casual Deadly Blades into actually turning it into a full-on sea halberd, and that is just impressive. That just shows how much Flapteezy wants to really stop the regeneration and finish fights when they start it, because I believe the next one or two team fights, if it even extends to that, could be the last. Yeah, and looking at R7, they don't really have as much deaths whisking as well so you really just have to stop them on their tracks if they can stall out the game make an important pick off make an important play then that might be something that brand esports can lose from yeah speaking of losing stuff they already lost the top side of the turret and you can definitely see that bin is absolutely oh. caught out that's not what you need to be at but the lord is already scored it and lusty is hunting for those kills brand esports We'll definitely get this equalizer right here for the Philippines. Sitting at one and one, Butters, you may have been the herald of good news for many Filipino fans around the world of Mobile Legends and of Brandy Sports. Maybe, just maybe, that game one was all they needed to pick up the pace. I mean, ja uh, well, it's a, it could be a download game. No, I'm not. <laughs> I'm sorry, Butters. Uh, <laughs> someone's very defensive here. Uh, I don't He's know. nervous. He's sweating a little bit. Like, wait, what are you talking about? You, yeah. did he say I, you look good I today, only, Leo? I only bring facts. Yeah. He brings facts. I guess no, you are looking I, good today, I, I, Leo. I, I, I did say that it's, it could be an element of surprise. There are many factors, right? Many factors here. But what I want to highlight is the respect. And right now, Brandy Sports, they have stayed blue. That means RQ Hoshi says red we want this chance to go double picks and that's how they want to react to this and again win this race mm -hmm. yeah and i think you know in terms of this race being able to kind of dictate the pace of the game rq hoshi deciding to go onto the red side something a little bit more familiar something that we've seen them actually adapt with against the burmese ghouls itself we saw a couple of really good drafts and slowly pulling back to what they're usually used to as i said before but contra where do you think this is leading well, it's definitely leading towards what they want to open up for the side of Brent Esports once again. I think that we are going to be seeing the different sort of the, uh, phase coming from the side of RQ Hoshi and what they want to pick up uh, coming in towards that double uh, things that they can go for in the initial phase. And with that, as part of being banned away, the question now is what I mentioned, the Yuzong. Is it going to land on RQ Hoshi's side? Ooh. Maybe, I don't know, because they still have those third bands, and those third bands generally kind of tell you is like what is the priority for either one of these teams, right? Mm, yeah, uh, Brandy Sports. Yeah, they're a team that could probably just focus on the tank as much. But Haruki Hoshi, I think they like the Lapu Lapu more than the usual. Like you would see them pick the usual, but it could be on the second phase. They like the Lapu Lapu more. I mean, Lapu Lapu, I don't know, like looking at the stats of whether or not Lapu Lapu or Yuzhong, we've seen the impact of Yuzhong more uh, occur more. And honestly, Lapu Lapu and Yuzhong have a pretty decent win rate overall. But uh, Very much so. coming out coming up for this last uh, last ban for RRQ Hoshi here, do you think that is going to be the go-to? Or are we not going to see Silvana here? I think they have to respect more 
Yu Zhong's flat easy. <clears throat> yep. Oh, but instead, they both play with fire and they're opening up the side lanes and the tanks. <sighs> so yeah, Lapu Lapu, Yu Zhong, they're all still on the table. The tanks, Jawhead, Cho, still on the table. Mm -hmm. yeah. And even the mages are relatively open too, like none of them were touched. Yeah, I'm, I want to look at the mages here because the first game, Arky Hoshi did pick up the Matilda, which is pretty much out in the open. I think that definitely having somebody who can just dish out quite a chunk of damage in the early game can actually put Red Esports slightly behind, finally chasing in with all these small little leads. So. Red Esports having a difficulty here, selecting their first for zero. In about five seconds from now, we're going to be seeing how they will be dealing with this, and they will go in to take that Matilda before anything else. I think this is a smart option here. It kind of just leaves the draft pretty open for their sides. Four counter picks onto RRQ's part, but RQ, they see this, and now they have to take advantage with the two picks and the benefits of being on that red side. Uh, it looks like they've locked in the Yutong. It has been working out extremely well for their team. The question is, Selena, Jawhead, we've seen them both kind of interchange between them within the first rotation. Wow, this is actually a shift in terms of uh, the pacing that RRQ Hoshi wants oh. to go for. They go straight for two team fight uh, heroes here on the first phase. Well, for Brent Esports, they have a lot to. Uh, they have a lot of choices to go for. They can go for a show. They can go for what? Uh, I mean, I a jawhead. I wouldn't be too surprised. Not, not, not really Serena because they have the middle already. Yeah, 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 yeah. But I, I mean, I wouldn't be too surprised if they decided to get the Cho in this situation. So arguably even an Alice as well? So far, Cho has been trusty for Lusty and I think they should again always focus on the mid lane. So far, first pick was on point. I think before the round goes back, there has to be some answer. And this could be a flex Baksha. Could go on Lusty, could go on Flapteasy from the side lanes again to really call uh, the regeneration on this Yu Zhong. And as well, Lancelot, which, you know, as great as uh, Brenny Sports' Kalteasy was on the Lancelot across of M2, not just the games that he lost. He actually scored the very first Savage of the whole entire tournament with this. Um, it's still two out of three in the first phase that they answer. Yeah, and uh, just looking at these boxes, it, it just gives oh. a little bit of flashback of PTSD to some of those uh, players that oh. were actually facing off against that brand esports side yesterday because this boxer is so potent to just, you know, get in the face of whether or not you have a chill, it doesn't even matter. Yeah, game winning Baksha against Alter Ego yesterday, but yeah, Araki Hoshi, each pick so far have been denial picks. They didn't need to ban them because they were planning to pick them up anyways. Yeah. Remember, uh, the first two picks here for the side of Araki Hoshi, they rely so much on the lifesteal or the spell vamp that they have. So that means if you go and try to take the regeneration a bit down, tone it down a bit, that is going to hurt their tanking capability in the long run. So this Baksha and Lancelot just is just so good for the side of Brain Esports. I mean, I think I think it's pretty great, especially when it comes to just den uh, the denial of health regeneration overall, especially when it comes to both Sylvana as well uh, as well as the Yuzong, both pretty dependent on it. Both can abuse the Oracle, uh, both will look to get, you know, the Bloodlust Axe and the Concentrated Energy respectively. But Bren now banning out the uh, banning out the Ling, forcing the question onto RRQ, how exactly are they going to get something that scales in towards the late game, especially when you have someone like Carl Tizi, he's got the Lancelot already. Brand Esports, when they go for these kinds of Lancelot lineups, they not they don't necessarily try to go for a marksman side oh. lane. But if it's a possibility and if they are forced, Rebo can use a 1-1. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I don't doubt it. I don't doubt it. Now, going into the second phase of picking, that was the Roger locked out. Oh, they're going to steal away the 1-1. Argue Hoshi, oh, Reger, oh. Mind Butters, 1-1 one, one here. For the side lane, might be Wiz King, might be R7, now Brandy Sports. They're closing this up and without wasting okay. any time. Hold up! Double Bro. Assassin! Side lane Hayabusa! Can I also call it like triple Assassin in such a way like... Like... Selena looking... Quadruple, technically. If yeah. you're looking at the game's descriptions, yeah, Matilda and <laughs> Selena. Interesting! That's yeah. a lot of pickup potential. So, they don't have a tank per se that's gonna roam early. 
flat okay. people stay into the side lane. Uh, all right, this is getting even more interesting all right, because all we right, are finally this. seeing the Hellkirk coming into the picture, and this is actually magnificent. Yo, Ren Esports has a good draft, but RRQ Hoshi with just one pick. Mm. They, they just give a lot of. They just, you know, try to shut down. They tried to shut down Ren Esports draft as much as possible. They needed to find the pick. They picked the Hellkirt, and that answers a lot on Ren Esports side. I think this is some interesting adaptations. I don't necessarily believe it is going to work. I'm kind of 50-50 on the Hellkirt pick here. I do see that it is great in some situations, but when you have Matilda, and especially with the Circling Eagle, you can almost guarantee a lockdown in these uh, in a lot of these points. And uh, it's going to be who initiates first and who is going to be able to get their opponent preemptively. And that's going to be the name of the game. Who makes the first move? I'm not even thinking about the farming situation. Like, how much gold do you need? And at what point will you say, okay, we're ready for these fights between these two teams that require so much across all their core heroes? Oh, I don't know, but <laughs> at least I don't have to think about it for now. You boys, you're going to have to take this one because this is too big for me to handle. Okay, now... Talk about ideation coming from the side of James, right? RK Hoshi, what's great about the Hellkirk heading in towards the late game is not only diving in towards the back line, getting that catch, it's also about that split push. Like, he just gets so much movement speed when he pops in that Dark Knight Falls. Just get across the map, like, who's gonna be able to catch him when you can't even see your enemy? I agree, because seeing that 1-1 one, one really likes the 1v1 duels as well, you can uh, deny the vision of the 1-1 one, one and just try to go for uh, the uh, the duels on her side. Yep, Lusty almost getting taken down there. I kind of get it. This is a roaming Matilda. It's going to be a Matilda that provides shields and relies on mobility to kind of weave in and out of combat like a tank. Natalia, as you know, hold up. Psycho uses the Cyclone Eye with just enough time. A defensive arrow here by a few. Real quick, let's uh, rehash or remind people what lanings look like. It's going to be an XP lane Hayabusa. Ooh, Psycho, a little frisky wanting to get in on Rebo's face. And then the XP lane is going to be, oh, the gold lane is going to be the Baksha facing off against the 1-1. One -one. An interesting matchup, but ooh, Flappy is able to bully Wizking nonetheless. Yeah, of course, he's going to be soaking a little bit of the, sorry, the poke, and he's got to be careful with the Abyssal Arrow coming in as well, because Wiz King, if he just Ooh. gets oh. caught out, oh, okay. Purify, purify safe. She got that cleanse. Wait a minute. Uh, yeah, she's taking the A. Yeah, uh, well, he does have the innate cleanse, uh, cleanse yep. in his kit. So, RQ hits Vin. Vin here might go down. Oh, Dark Knight Falls. That's going to be some darkness raining down onto Brandy Sports. And they get the first blood. What a bait right there by Vin. No, no trades here by Brandy Sports. Yeah, and this is definitely going to be a little bit uh, troublesome uh, for the likes of Red Esports eventually when they are trying to go in for those sort of picks, which is what they are looking to set up, right? And here comes R7 already using the Black Dragon for crossing outwards by TZ as well as Lusty. Not going to be making much use out of this. As you can see, their health bars is still pretty much way up high, but the Hayabusa now moves over on towards the other side lane and it's going to be having a lot of <laughs> Great pushes. What a mirrored swap there by Brandy Sports and Argyo. She now this fight in mid near the turtle breaks out. Oh, the turtle at about one fifth of health. That's going to be stolen here by Kaltizi. And that's Lusty taken down here by R7. We're going to have to back out. Even Kaltizi doesn't want any part of this as Few gets caught in the middle of three members of RRQ. Three for none is the final tally here, the body count for RRQ Hoshi. The better trade went yeah. over the side of RRQ. This is to be expected because Rebo won't be part of any fights. But as long as oh. they can keep Psycho at bay, do not get caught in the way of the Dragons, that is going to be fine for Bren Esports. RRQ Hoshi, they're doing a great job as well. They're contesting, they're getting the kills, the pickoffs. And now what's left is they should go for the turrets. I, I think this is actually RQ's plan, right? Like, you really want the attention to be on Psycho as well as Vin instead of Sin or even R7 in that sort of sense. Wiz King kind of can self-sustain, especially when he does have the crossbow of Tang. So that's what they're hoping to pick up. Oh, so an arrow here saves 
was lusty and a nice take down by Kalteezy onto Sin and the unthinkable has happened. We were talking about how it should have been Psycho, it should have been Vin, but yeah, they caught out Sin at the very right moment. Real quick note, ladies and gentlemen, Avarice onto that Sylvana. Nice way of the dragon here catching Lusty. He survives. That's going to be the Thorn Rose pushing away Psycho and the gang. That is the prowess of a Selena. Just throw out the arrow. If you hit the Hellcurt, the Hellcurt has no Purify. That is going to be Lance taking him down. And that is a lot of time. And this is uh, this is the thing about Hellcurt that I didn't read. Oh like, boy. But Vin! What? Tortoise Boy Sans underneath the turret allows him to go deep, way too deep, and there you go. R7 can't even regenerate despite having full Shaw essence. And off camera, by the way, that was a kill by Repo. Oh. Those are the situations. Sid. But they're not done yet. Butters, let Lusty finish. He's chasing down Sin. That's going to be the Cyclone Eye going through the wall underneath the turret, the safety of his side of the map. So far, Butters, Lusty says, okay, you can speak. These okay. are the things. That After you, Baksha does like the dives that Red Esports are doing now. It won't be possible without him. Yeah, and those sort of catches were magnificent for Red Esports because now they do have a little bit of activation, especially on Kalteezy. This is their key towards those game winning trades. And you just look at the amount of damage that Kalteezy can so He was under the turret, it didn't mean much as he popped out the turret Poissons and the other members of Red Esports could easily go in to burst down the how could it whenever he just appears on the wrong moment. And here comes Lusty yeah. pushing them back. Oh no, that's going to be Dark Knight Falls, <laughs> but it was just a little too late. There was no setup, no follow through. Lusty gets blasted down by R7, a trade for the support and your core at Red Esports going off with a lottery. Yeah, just looking at how this sort of the oh. jungler assassin meta is going, right? Of course, you have the tier one picks coming in from the side of oh. Red Esports, and oh boy. Psycho here gets popped into the Poissons underneath it. This hurts, this hurts. That's Vin taken down by Carl Tizi as they steal away the turtle. The purple, that is, and the turret. You see, I get the words mixed up, but nonetheless, I'm liking what Red Esports is bringing. Mm, Rebo. Mm, that oh. is, will the crossbow of Tang be thrown it out? It has it been. Be. That's whisking in the air. Pachow, pachow. That's Rebo taken down. That's the sound of a bird with a gun. Bird that's with what a gun. That's, that's what okay, whisking right, that, I, I'm pretty sure yeah. nobody wants to mess with a bird with a gun, but. <laughs> we'll allow it. We'll allow it. Yeah. Uh, what's big news right here, you know? Like, other than guns, what is pretty much lethal? Blades and who's got the sharper blades right now? It's called Teezy. Oh, yeah. Already having that blade of the Hep Disease being oh, bought yeah. out. Sin really struggling to find his footing in this entirety of the match. Like, oh, you, you got the Hayabusa, you got the Selena to deal with. After you get past that Boxia, it, it's honestly tough for him to choose from. Oh, Vindo jumping in with the Imperial Justice and R7 coming in with the Black Dragon Form. You gonna use a Cyclone Eye, get out of here. Oh, from the back, Whisking gets skewered by Carl TZ. The other TZ brother takes down Psycho, and right now, the stickers come up. The Fallen Brothers of RRQ Hoshi, they have no choice but to accept this conversion from Brandy Sports as they push. This offlane Baksha is just making waves. Where is that a Brent Esports? He's controlling so much of this RRQ aggression. Yeah. Yeah, and just look at it from the drafting phase itself. It's like, okay, you can have the use on all you want, but remember this, I'm going to be activating what we can. And now we do have a little bit of a look at the itemization as the turret falls in favor of the side of Brent Esports. Now pressing on towards Sin as he is being forced a little bit backwards. Rebo is almost with the endless battle. Sin is just getting the Legion. Uh, the We're talking about the optimal form of Carl Tease here, right? Right, right, right. And right. I think there are layers to this question. We'll get to it later, because right. right now we're back into the battle. This is going to be eight minutes, 20 seconds in. And yeah, look at this. Flap Easy can just walk into the side of the jungle for our Kyoshi towards the orange here, pushing them out. Vin uses the Imperial Justice as a defense mechanism. Wave of Dragon onto this Baksha. Flap easy, not even 
Not even blinking, not even sweating at all. He's like, yeah, that's fine. It happens. Ooh, look I'm at, out. Look at Psycho even uh, catching yeah. that arrow yeah, so that like, Vin doesn't go down. I'm like, yeah, let me block it. Let me block it. Now a push up top. And even in mid, there's a huge wave crashing in. Oh, wow. Six to none. Contra, six to none. Yeah, and just look at them. They invest so many effort on towards Baptizi, and all of that is actually going to waste. How are you supposed to actually burst down the Baxi? And there's no apparent answer to that. Sin, you don't even want to get to that sort of question even. So it, it's really tough to ignore the Baxia and go for the rest with him just really pummeling them from getting anywhere backwards or forward. Now, it's simply cycle there, wait on the dragon, and this might just be a big fight for Brent Esports. Ooh. Well, enough. Yo, 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 yo. The mere presence of Flapteezy scares the rest of Arakihoshi, and this is prime rotations. Butters, do you agree with me? This is all leading up towards his first Lord take. Yes, it, it could be, but I think for them, they just want to go for the kills. They want to take the turrets right now so that RQ Hoshi will be forced back to stay in their base. Now, if you would look at the items here for RQ Hoshi, Psycho and Vin picked up an antique, uh, antique Kiras. Mm -hmm. So that only means that they having a hard time dealing with the damage of Carl Tizi, and they even have Flap Tizi on their throat as well. Doesn't help. Right now, Psycho goes in. Less than half health, R, R, Qs, R7 coming in. Sin Whoa. gets blasted by Carl Tizi. It's looking grim. Oh, they trade out. They finally get rid of this menace that is Flap Tizi. It's a trade one for one so far. And in goes the Circling Eagle. Gets knocked up. Lusty, Whisking, trying to look for a nice angle. Carl Tizi still to fall. He's got like few takes on R7. It's down to two. Imperial Justice catches none. Oh, from the back line, Finn gets blasted by Carl Tizi. Oh, Whoa. and Rebo! Rebo misses by one shuriken. It's gonna be three for one while Wizking says, let me just clear this wave and get the hell out. Does it even matter if you catch that Buxia? Like you just saw Sin just exploded right there. He tries to get a catch, oh. but they don't get Wizking right now. This is not the fight you should even take or even ponder upon. And Brent Esports, well, they're laughing their way to the bank. Oh! I mean, I love the Helicard pick just because of the utility it yeah. brings. Yeah. But Brent Esports, every time Sin goes in, that rhymes by the way. Six out of ten. Uh, okay, getting there. <laughs> now, Sin going in, he is gonna try and pick up someone, but every Brent Esports member just turns to him. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Again, as nice as the kit is, again, you see the intent. But yeah. where's the execution? And right now, it's not on the side of RQ Hoshi. Brenny Sports is ahead by about 9,000 gold here. Yeah, I'm just looking at the charts. I'm definitely thinking that Brenny Esports now overpowering in terms of damage. There's oh. no way that, yeah, call in all the defense all you want. You, it's just that there's just a no-go zone for Sin. Mm -hmm. And you don't even want to invest this king all the way up into the front line, right? No-go so, zone. Anywhere that yeah. Lusty circling is a no-go zone, all right? You got cops like Flap TZ saying, sir, this is area's cordon off. If you come in here, it's not going to be good for you. Now there's the Dark Knight Falls from the back. Sin once more, the first casualty, and Lord still stands. That's going to be the Poisson here pop by Flap TZ from the back. Finn gets destroyed by the OG Shadow Kill. And Whoa. Rebo ain't done. The Doctor takes out Psycho as R7. well. And r several right in the middle of four members of Ready Sports. Make that five. That's all of them, ladies and gentlemen. They're going to go for the push. It's just Wiz King left to defend. It's is it enough? The answer is no. Another shadow kill by the good doctor. Ladies and gentlemen, Brand Esports with the classic recall in front of your base as they take game number three. Now, if you think that the TP is annoying, the shots that came out that really just so hard for the side of RQ. You feel it. They they brought in Sin and Wiz King. Mm. So for the stability of the lineup, the player lineup, they just wanted to be aggressive into the early game. But right now, it certainly feels like it's biting them back. Mm. Yeah, and I'm glad that you mentioned the Matrix because it's between the red pill and the blue pill right now. Like, <laughs> do you go with what everybody has been uh, doing exactly the same, going for something very standard and uh, somehow works, or you go out of way in towards the road not taken and Brent Esports shows that they can't do both and still 
really get closer and closer towards the Grand Finals. Now, back in towards the draft, right? It seems like there's a lot of assassins being taken out from the early phase. Yep, given how many assassins showed up in game number three, they're like, hold up. Let's pull the brakes on this because when things get crazy, it has been proven that Brenny Sports is the one who has the upper hand right now. Benedetta, the last band for Brenny Sports alongside Natalia and Yu Sun Shin. RQ Hoshi, they take out the Brody as you always should, as well as Fuse Selena. Gideon, what are we looking to here? What's the last band for RQ Hoshi so that Bren has a tough time getting their first pick? Uh, this is a really tough one here because they have to make a decision on whether they need to get rid of Yutong or they want to keep it up for later. And the same goes for Esmeralda here. But if Esmeralda goes through, I think there is a potential likelihood that RRQ could be able to pick up Claude. And they performed really well on Claude. But Bren, they've been absolutely trying to shut down Sin and put him onto and force him actually onto the assassin. And another important point to note is that you really want Whiskin to be pretty much in your face. And that's. Definitely not working out from the past game at all. Like, the impact was very close to none, and now they're taking out the Yuzong just to try to negate a little bit of both what they did back in the Bruce game. Probably an Esmeralda oh. for any sports. I mean, they're I mean they're sniffing something. They're like Esmeralda. This can't be it. This is this is a little too good to be true. Low hanging fruit. It, it, it's so easy, and yeah, oh. they will avoid it. They skirt it. They skirt it. They go ahead and pick up the Claude. And again, I think this is smart. One is you don't fall for the easy trap. Like Esmeralda, I think RQ Hoshi was expecting it. And yes, Sin is so good on marksman type heroes. This is two birds with one stone. Give it the give it the Carl. Yeah, but this just means that RRQ, again, Sin might have to bite the bullet one more time for his team. Locking in the Matilda as well as the Esmeralda, at least RRQ, we've seen them perform on this against the Burmese Ghouls. And again, whoever got Esmeralda, it was kind of like a 50-50. It's like, oh, you can see where it looks super overpowered, but at the end of the day, didn't exactly get to that point where they could start carrying. Yeah, and speaking of which, you know, in towards phase one, I'm expecting to see a Boxia because the honestly have no answer to it even up till now like yeah you can get, definitely go in with this falling star moon just if he's gonna be moving all the way in towards your front liners yeah. that's definitely gonna be opening link a lot of opportunities especially with also the cho being picked up by brent esports my oh my this is the trusty lusty cho ever since unlocking his potential yesterday i've perished all doubts like it, i used to think like oh it's so bad it's so hard to use but now i think lusty got his mojo back yeah, and uh clearly seeing that they have an esmeralda on the side of rq hoshi there are people who are gonna go for the split so with that in mind Bren esports just go straight for the show and a lot of thoughts that, that might have come out from ducky there but this is a good hero for lusty given that the requirements and setup is right yeah, and I think, it, oh, Yodora here coming out for the side of RRQ Hoshi. And I think they want to just kind of compensate for the fact that she lacks that mobility with the help of Matilda to kind of follow up on, oh, you get a little bit of harass and all of a sudden, one, two, zip and stun and you're gone. I hate to jump the gun here, but the last time we saw this many mages in a single lineup was when there was no tank, right? There was I, I, no tank. I'm wondering if RRQ Hoshi is so bold to do that. I was just about to point it out, like, I, I told you so much about the box and he, he's just having a big grin like you're giving him what he wants and he definitely could soak it unless if they have a pick here to really say is oh I am gonna be someone you can't ignore and my mages can actually uh, do the things that they want to keeping the box occupied and this is where more and more of all these bats are coming right through with the one one first so are they going to go in for another assassin for the side of RQ? Yeah, Roger is a good ban. I was thinking that maybe RQ Hoshi is planning to go for the Roger just because this is a dive uh, heavy composition, mm -hmm. the Esmeralda and the Matilda. Mm -hmm. And but, it's a Sin Chao too. Yeah. Uh, Sin has no options. Very few. I'm thinking maybe there are more that he could go for, but it won't be as good in the current meta, the tournament meta that we have right now. RQ Hoshi, I think uh, Sim is going to be forced to play a Ling, probably. Mm, potentially. But Bren still has a bad. 
I, I would agree that, you know, Brent could shut down this link almost straight away and force RQ into something that takes even longer and doesn't exactly spike as nicely with the Mages, and that could just be putting him on something like a Hayabusa here. But they don't bat out the link, they get rid of the Khalid instead. I really like that most of these games, they are actually removing the Khalid. They understand that it is really absolutely tough to take down the Khalid. Not to say that he's ultra tanky, but his sustainability is... Just as bad as you compare facing off against the Esmeralda. Mm. I, mm, I mean, there's a lot of speculation that, that that could be one way. That could be one way here. But RRQ, considering that the style that they played so far, they could look to set up Har They could look to set up Harley, and it's not like we haven't seen this huge mage composition uh -huh, before. Uh -huh. We saw it in the group stages against uh, uh, against EVOS SG and we're able to kind of defend against it. But instead, they're going to go with the Bellaric here oh. in, and hoping that that might just be enough to stop Claude in his tracks. Okay, so there's a tank. We were looking for one. No Lemon, but we'll see how this ends up on our RQ Hoshi's lineup this ah, time. Wait. Butters, light bulb moment. We, we've seen this. This could be a Bruno setup for RQ Hoshi. Oh, we've seen another another wrong. version of it. No, no, it, it's almost it's almost the carbon copy, the exact same thing. They've got the components there as well, but Bren, they lock in the Farsa as well as well as the Silvana, which was I was thinking of something, but I think Butters might be onto something here. Yeah, could it be a Bruno. Because that's the only thing that RQ played in terms of the Marchman Jungle that worked. Give it to Sin. Give it to Sin. It's the only one left too. If that is what they're trying to go for, if not the Harley. Uh, it's a few concerns that I have here, especially with Sin and, and Whisking on board. You can honestly see that the tempo that they are playing at is not exactly the same like how Lemon as well as Albert has been performing throughout the entirety of the runs on the upper bracket. And instead, our answers oh, they go will be delivered by the carry here instead of the Bruno that has been speculated. But, you know, Brent Esports still having something that we've been seeing for the past few games, which is honestly looking real good. All right, my question is, while it's hot, while it's here, is this a better choice than the Bruno? Because if you go for Marksman, you better go for the one that works. You better I... go for the one that is right for the for 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 the the situation and carry seems so vulnerable i would agree in most cases and bruno yes he i would i would argue that bruno is even more susceptible and more volatile in comparison to carry because his win conditions are super early and super late there there is no middle ground to that without a snowball going mm. yeah uh for the carry there's some leeway to actually just go down once or twice and you can if you do have a good early game you might be popping off by the time that you reach mid-game. And that's how the carry works. All right, well, given this unorthodox draft by RQ Hoshi, everything lays on the line. Ladies and gentlemen, this is game number four. Brandy Sports looking for the elimination onto the King of Kings, RQ Hoshi. Gentlemen, let's get it. The King of Kings here is definitely putting a lot of high stakes on this carry in hopes that if she could get really ahead, that Boxia may not be a problem in the late game phase where you can just kite them out itself. So I'm definitely getting where exactly they're going for instead of the Bruno that you didn't, you did mention, might not be the best of choices. Mm -hmm, yeah, and, and again, your, the, your pick, uh, your mention of, uh, oh wait, hold on, this might be a bit of an engagement. Um, Cartesi going up forward really aggressively, the Cosmic Lance already landing, third hit of G could oh. go, and all of a sudden, Psycho, who isn't level 2, who really needed to be level 2 there to save their Eudora, IR7, trying to salvage the situation, but back to mid. Mm. Lusty and the crew, they were fast on their fingers just to punish that risky play from Vin. Vin tried to steal the purple buff. It didn't work. It's, it's not the greatest of plays here, but it doesn't mean RQ is out just yet. The first bloods usually don't mean too much as long as you don't get to translate into anything. And Brent, no buffs, no steals, no wave clear, uh, no wave clears, no invades as well. So technically, it's still just, you know, slightly ahead. Yeah. And, uh, it all depends on who we see uh, gets his first item. There's this first item power spike that we're talking about when it comes to a carry or a Claude. And uh, speaking of which, we're already seeing a lot of invades coming from the side of our RQ while Lusty is trying to play that in-your-face uh, chill. And 
Definitely not the bush that he wants to move in for, but Whiskey might oh. go for a catch. He misses the Wrath of the Dryad, so that would have been a really nice catch if that if he, if he was able to land that. But at least they buy a little bit of pressure to get this turtle. But can Brand capitalize on this here? You can see a lot of their members rotating fast, and not to mention Boxy is coming in hot. Mm. And this is a way to just uh, catch Psycho and the others. They wanted to stop the effectiveness of this Baksha, but there's a fight happening right now. Look at this. Psycho gets caught out, and Sin and the others are just forced to go back. They can't do anything. They can't punish. I'm not sure why exactly did Psycho went back in, because none of these members are actually responding towards this, and very obviously, that was a miscommunication. Yeah, it just seems like there was a little bit of disconnect there for the entire team of RQ. Whether they were, were they sure they were going in, were they unsure they were going in, they, they had to make that decision, and they have to make it fast. They just they just got caught out, and a few won't be holding back on the trigger of his Imperial Justice. Uh -huh. and yeah, I mean, right now, Bren is just playing a little bit more in sync in comparison to RRQ. But RRQ, they don't have, uh, they don't have, you know, they're not so in the dumps in terms of their economy. They're still relatively even for the most part of it. 8K to 7.3K. It's only going to be a 6 to, a six to 700 differential overall. And Sin, he's going to need to start quickly, quickly ramping up into this game. He needs to at least get the Demon Hunter Sword into Golden Staff to make sure that Flap Teasy, oh, oh, Flap Teasy on this Boxia a little more ineffective. Yeah, I definitely got to say that, uh, this Kaltizi is ramping up way faster in that sort of sense as compared to Sin at the moment. But Flaptizi, now that Arky Hoshi has already known what to expect coming from the poorest game, he's going to be facing off against R7 at the moment. This is honestly not going to be going all too much anywhere, but eyes are on that river right now because Matilda is looking for a setup. Mm. Psycho and Few will meet each other in the brush. But I don't think RQ Hoshi would just be initiating on a Sylvana support right now. There is a lot of things that they have to consider and they have to bring Sin to the point where he gets the endless battle, Raptor Machete and endless battle, then just go from there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's important. And I think, you know, they, they have to itemize correctly for the side of RRQ. We see the Talisman already being purchased on R7, but this is going to be the fight that we're looking for. Psycho going to get hit by Flapteezy initially with a shield of box here. As Whisking, he is on this side dealing with few with no problems, but the rest of RRQ, they are looking for the disengage. Three-man hit from the G-Kun. No way the dragon as well. Not going to be enough as they are able to get the damage from Rebo's and Feathered Airstrike, but now they are going to call it off. They trade one for one. Can they get one more? Whisking finally goes down. As you can see, Cartesi, he is very comfortable in his position and RRQ forced to back away. Definitely unfavorable for RRQ Hoshi. Not only will they eventually lose out on this turtle, just look at the picks. They've managed to annihilate all these key components and Finn, once again, get caught out and, well, just Brent Esports knowing what exactly to do and just like how they do best. All the turtles in priority. R7 gonna take a full brunt of damage from the Blazing Duet. Doesn't look like he was able to stack up his Art of Thievery to maximum before coming in. But you know, R7, he just laughs. Aha! Go back into lane. Let's see what else is there to happen. But Flap, on the other hand, gets gone out. And that's going to be a lot of ultimates getting thrown into him. Flap TV! Oh, oh. Will he still escape that? No, he won't. But look at the commit. Resources, skills, all the damage that was thrown out. How tanky is that Baksha? Yeah, literally four ultimates came out of them. Oh, I I'm just watching that. If he's just going to be popping that rejuvenation, he can definitely last in phase. And now, here comes another little bit of the tussle here. And mind you, they spent everything just to get one. Well, at least they didn't get anything in return. Wait a minute, Lusty trying to make the big play here. Unfortunately, he doesn't actually hit it. Good preemptive uh, attack coming in from RRQ, okay. but call it easy coming in. Pretty on hot, doesn't get too much damage from his Blazing Duet. Not a lot of value. Bren need to start pulling back away, but this is RRQ to look for that re-engage. They're getting a little antsy as they move closer towards their jungle. They just don't know where the rest of the team is yet. Mm. Yeah, and uh, of course, this is going to be very vital for them to just cut in all these spell bands, but Sin! gets caught out in the mid side. Bran looking all too hot. He's going for Finn as well. Just look at Kaltizi. He's already 3-0.
Mm, he is very happy with the amount of damage he's had there. Even diving, Kaltizi, he's going in hard with the help of Laptizi to enable him to oh. go under the turret. Whiz Way King? Way the dragon onto Whiz King here as they try to secure this up. Rather, the Dryad is in enough. Kaltizi only losing 50% of his HP to take it out. What great play coming in from Ren to ensure this dive is successful. Now, Argy Hoshi, they still have a chance to get back at this. They need to find the opening. They need to find a breather. But Carl is just going wild. This is the confidence that we're talking about. Gijun and Contra. Speaking of confidence, you know, they might just be the Indonesia slayers here because they've already taken down Alter Ego and now they are finding every single way to punish Araki Hoshi. A true test of might, but not only that, Brent, it feels like they have a lot of momentum riding behind them with a lot of their moves. It is very concise, it is very clean compared to their first two games where you can definitely see that there were a couple of misplays here and there, but overall, Brent just making the right decisions each and every time. You oh. won't hold back on just using the Imperial Justice. He knows that he has a low cooldown time just because of the pull yourself together. He's not gonna he's not gonna try and conserve that as much as possible. He knows that if you catch one's ear, he is able to get a kill as well. Speaking of getting a kill here, it's gonna be been there and this basic duet outwards RRQ, but they're putting them back as they manage to get the catch on towards Cult Easy as well as Lusty. Flapped Easy eventually will fall, but look how much is taking out of them to get this pick. Few walks away alive, but there's still Ribble at the back. Better s right gets one, and the Eudora goes oh. down again. Great return kills coming in from Bren's side. They lose three out of great execution from RRQ. A great mechanical play, especially using the Circle of Eagle to make sure that Call Easy Blazing the wet. I'm just going to circle around you till it's done. This is one of the things that I'm telling you about RRQ, Hoshi. They can find these little openings and they can punish Bren Esports. Now, Bren Esports, they might have the lead now, but they should be careful into picking their plays. There are times where you can get to, uh, let's say you can be overconfident, just go at them and just lose Carlties in the process. Item check is up right now. That is going to be Demon Hunter Sword, the Golden Staff, Rebo with the Clock of Destiny, Winter Truncheon, uh, Lightning Truncheon rather, Few is with the Necklace of Durans. On to the other side here, Cursed Helmet on Wiz King, Bruce Force Breastplate on R7. Oh, there goes the fight. Oh, well, they're already going to begin again. Circle Eagle starting off, but R7 is going to get absolutely destroyed by this blazing duet coming in for a fully stacked Haltizi here. Unfortunately, he goes backwards with Batman Amir, so he can't get into the fight, but they do Third. find another one. They're looking for the pincer from Haltizi coming in to twice. Poisons as well. They've cut them out. Brand looking to cut them off as Whisking, trying to slow down the damage. Now Sin needs to turn this around. He's got the items finally, but unfortunately, it ain't going to be enough. His range is just a little too short. Oh my goodness, well played from Bran. Like, they saw opportunity and they took it right there, especially with RQ all stuck in that choke point. At first, they pick out R7 and Whisk King was all the way out of that fight already and he joins way too late. Sin is trying his best to just control this game. You know what? He wants to get the farm. He really just wants to carry. But the thing is, Bren Esports is just has just a lot of control. The box is just controlling oh them way too oh. much and the throw. Psycho, psycho. It's a pickup. Oh, uh, gets hit by way of the dragon. Sin next to fall. No, that's the worst person that wanted to die for the side of RQ. And now R7 is on the run. They've already taken out Eudora as well. The cop is falling apart as Bren allowing them to say, hey, make a mistake. Face check me. I won't let you get away. This is definitely very punishing because this might just cost them this final run right on the lower brackets. They're already pummeling down the base. That timer is already up. Psycho is going to be coming out of the base, but Bren, they can easily go on for this lore. Mm, Bren, now they're clearing the side waves first. They're trying to punish, trying to take away the economy again, and RRQ are realizing they are on a ticking clock here. They don't have a lot to work with. They're running out of resources on top of everything else, but can Bren close out this game here? The Lord is now their target, and that's what they aim for. They get the extra help from the Lord. They know that they need to be safe at threading this game-ending play that they're going to do. There are still 
outer turrets onto the top lane, Gideon Contra. And as you can see, Bren Esports knows that this is only the level 1 Lord, not the Luminous Lord. Mm -hmm. Level 1 Lord or not, I mean, Bren wants to take this advantage and just sure. really press down on the advantage uh, even harder. And if it, if this doesn't go well, at least R at the worst, RRQ go even with Bren and it starts all over uh, once more. But if Bren get ahead, they end the game and they take the series and they go to the Grand Finals. And now it's really relying on Sin so much that a lot of all these Athena shields have already been purchased. There's going to be more magic resistance coming in towards this late phase. Yep, they're going to be clearing off the Lord over the mid side, but Brand going for the dive! Oh, it's going really hard. They already get been in the process. R7 and now pulling on back. He wants to go back into uh, the base to get some help. But Sin, he's locked down in the Pyro of Justice. But can they peel him up? Finally, Whiskey is in position to do so. They lose two inhibitor turrets at the same time here. But Brent, they're going for the end. This is it. Brent trying to pull on forward. RQ clearing the waves as much as they can. Right. But they're throwing their bodies Lusty. as soon as they do. Lusty, he's done it. He's brought more glory. Welcome to the Grand Final. Finals, Bren Esports. This is the first time that Indonesia is out of the Grand Finals. Bren Esports, Burmese Ghouls, get yourselves ready for that best of seven. If what that's a not a statement age. for one. What a new age. The Indonesians have to step down. Contra, you were saying, you, are, you were asking a question? This is history in the making. Oh. We are definitely seeing this trophy going on to a new nation. Yeah. And wow. Confirm, at least. At least. You can't see this right now, but Ducky's off screen jumping up and down. He is so proud of his boys. And I can only understand and relate and sympathize with the feeling here because, oh my god goodness we've been talking about you know indonesia being the teams the region to be they've been such a powerhouse but look at that score three to one in favor of brand taking the series going to the grand finals and i think this is the time we could say that the gap has finally closed